Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the 250 years old robotic dolls that can write, draw and sing. And to find out, was it really possible to make such wonders 250 years ago? There had to be something in the water in the 18th century. A whole lot of people acquired some amazing skills out of what seems nowhere. Another one of these brilliant individuals was Pierre Jacquet Ross. He was born on July 28, 1721 in La chaux de fonds in Canton, Neuchâtel, Switzerland. He was a watchmaker who lived in Paris, London and Geneva where he designed and built animated dolls or automata to help his firm sell watches and mechanical birds. Once again, we have a big question mark next to his education. He was supposed to become a clergyman, so he studied theology and philosophy, but from nowhere came affinity for science and mechanics. And as we know, the times somehow were very conducive to designing and building some ahead of its time me mechanisms like the Colibin's egg clock and the peacock clock. I personally think the technology was at a totally different level than we are led to believe. But naturally, we are forced to believe that some guys were simply light years ahead of the regular folk those days. The same regular folk, you know, who just a few years earlier were peeing and defecating behind a curtain at the Versailles Palace. Sorry, got sidetracked. So, Jaquette Ross was introduced to the father and son, Jean and Daniel Bernoulli, who were famous mathematicians and physicists. The Bernoulli were into the construction of automatons. Supposedly, they influenced Jaquette Ra's curiosity about such devices. He was also influenced by Jusui Robert, who built clocks and watches, the King of Prussia, Frederick Willem I. Apparently, Robert somehow managed to guide Jaquette Ra's without actually training him. In 1741, he began a seven-year apprenticeship in the field of clockmaking. As the story goes, he was very good at his craft. With the time, he got bored with making clocks and moved on to automatons. He created a few singing bird mechanisms that could move and sing just like real birds. By 1750, he became one of the leading makers of such mechanisms. The reason I am not going into the complexity of those singing bird mechanisms is because what he made later dwarfs anything you can imagine. His story is pretty interesting. He sold six of his creations to the Spanish crown and was paid 2,000 gold pistols. In the process, he clearly lucked out with the Spanish Inquisition. Jaquette draws was supposed suspected of sorcery and forced to reveal the automata's workings to the Grand Inquisitor. Another account claims that the automata were imprisoned briefly while the authorities try to figure out how they worked. Yet another tale tells of a group of monks who came to see the devices in the Spanish court. When the automata were activated, the monks were overwhelmed with wonder and prostrated themselves in prayer. Between 1768 and 1774, the Jaquette Draws Automata was created. It consisted of three dull automata built between 1768 and 1774 by Pierre Jaquette Draws, his son Henry Louis, and Jean Frederic Lachat, the musician the draughtsman and the writer. The dolls are still functional and can be seen at the Musée d'Art et History of Neuchâtel in Switzerland. Let's take a look at them. Just look how wonderful they have been built so many years ago and nobody knows how. The musician is modeled as a female organ player. The music is not recorded or played by a musical box. 
The doll plays a genuine custom-built instrument by pressing the keys with her fingers. Movements of her chest show her breathing, and she follows her fingers with her head and eyes. The automaton also makes some of the movements that a real player would do, such as balancing the torso. The draughtsman is modeled as a young child. And is capable of drawing your different images. A portrait of Louis XV, a royal couple believed to be Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI, a dog with Montutu, my doggy, written beside it, and a scene of Cupid driving a chariot pulled by a butterfly. The draughtsman works by using a system of cams that code. The movements of the hand in two dimensions, plus one to lift the pencil. The automaton also moves on his chair, and he periodically blows on the pencil to remove dust. Just about incredible. Well, the rider is the most complex of the three automata, using a system similar to the one used for the draughtsman. For each letter, he is able to write any custom text up to forty letters long. The text is rarely changed. One of the latest instances was in honor of President Francois Mitterrand when he toured the city. The text is coded on a wheel where characters are selected one by one. He uses a goose feather to write, which he inks from time to time, including a shake of the wrist to prevent ink from spilling. His eyes follow the text being written, and his head moves when he takes some ink. And this writer is the one I wanted to talk about. Don't get me wrong; I don't, I'd not think that any of the other dolls. Or singing birds could have been created within the framework of the commonly known 18th century education and technology, but this writer is just something. First of all, please refer to the article where I touched up on the today's clockmaker education and 1750s tool Cliban's egg-shaped clock presented to Catherine II in 1769. Well, let's just take a look. Yeah, the writer. Something incredible. Well, with some six thousand parts, it can be programmed to reproduce any message. Of up to 40 characters, in the upper half of the writer's body is a long vertical cylinder made up of three sets of 40 cams. One set of cams controls the horizontal movements, another the vertical movements, and a third the amount of pressure the writer applies to the paper, thus enabling it to make both light and heavy strokes, just like in real human script. Beneath the vertical cylinder, the second part of the mechanism incorporates a disc with 40 spaces on it, so that the order of characters can be selected for the writer's message. The automaton can move its head and eyes as it composes, and it is able to compensate for changes in distance between the figure and the desk, so that the letters remain evenly spaced. Over time, the device has been programmed to write different messages, which have included layout, made his jacket draws and his hotel. And ironically, I think, therefore, I am. Common trade followed from approximately 1750 to 1800s. We have tons of this complicated mechanisms that probably only a few masters of today would be able to recreate. Then everything. Stops. The skill gets lost. Official explanation is degradingly dull. As the French Revolution and the Napoleonic era changed the face of Europe, interest in these luxuries ebbed. 
Well, my summary is that I will just copy and paste the exact same thing I wrote for Kaliban's clock, where such items will built 250 years ago. Where? Quite possible they were. But they were built by the people who had institutional knowledge of constructing things like this. They had proper tools and adequate education for building items of comparable qualities. They were fairly comparable and advanced human civilization which was annihilated a few hundred years ago. In some areas, well, they might have been even more advanced than ours. I will keep on providing circumstantial evidence of the existence of such a civilization. 